So I wanted to talk a little bit about this acronym DRY or don't repeat yourself. And I wanna explain how you can use it to make your code more clean, but also some limitations and some gotchas with following this paradigm. So what exactly does don't repeat yourself mean? So when you're writing code, sometimes you might be inclined to copy and paste code from one part of your system to another part. And if you keep doing that, you might just have a bunch of copy paste code all over the place. And I think this is the main thing that don't repeat yourself or keeping your code dry is trying to address. It's kind of preventing you from copying and pasting your code everywhere to make stuff kind of unmanageable. But I think there's some more important takeaways from dry. And I think it really is all about keeping all of your business logic and your business constants kind of centralized so that you don't kind of duplicate them across your entire system because it makes it really hard in the future if you have a use case that needs to change some type of rule, now you have to basically update that in a bunch of different places. So make sure you try not to copy your code in too many places because it can just become unmanageable. And by the way, I do want to kind of highlight some examples in code in this video. So stick around if you want to see some of those examples. So although keeping your code dry is something that you should kind of strive for as you're coding and learning how to code, there is some things I want to warn you about following this acronym. The main thing is you can actually get into a pitfall of over abstracting your code, right? You could find a piece of code that looks really similar to another piece of code and you decide to write an abstract function over that because you think that it'll keep it dry or kind of consolidate this duplicate logic. And what ends up happening is you make these really bad abstractions that aren't really generic or they're kind of they're kind of too generic. And before you look at your code and try to find places where you can kind of simplify things or like dry up the code, always think to yourself, if I were to get a business requirement in the future that requires me to change this, is this component A going to also be affected with the change that I'm doing for this particular use case? Now, I don't know if I'm explaining that really well, but you can start abstracting your code too much for absolutely no good reason if you try to just pick and choose like where stuff might be duplicated or could be simplified. So with all that being said, I do want to show you some code just so you understand like, you know, what does it mean to keep your code dry? You might be a beginner. You don't really understand what I'm talking about. So we have a really basic web application over here, which has a cart page and a product page. And you can kind of go back and forth between your carts and your products. And I want to show you an example of where you can kind of apply this in code uh, paradigm. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the cart page. So if we scroll down here, you can see that it basically has a script tag that is going to loop through these items. And then for each item that it finds, it's going to take some uh, HTML and basically attach it to a DOM element and append it to the page, right? So hopefully you understand like vanilla JavaScript and DOM manipulation. We are just creating some DOM elements and pushing them on the page. And that is basically how if I go to the cart page these products over here, the apple and the orange are being displayed. And if I go to the other page, the products page, we have very similar logic, right? This kind of is like a duplicate of the other page. Um, we have the same, we have a list of items or a list of products. We loop through every product. We gener generate some HTML and then we append that to the page. So I wanna talk about where could we potentially dry this code up, right? And you can try to like, compare this file to this other file and realize that there's a lot of duplication going on. But I wanna show you where you probably shouldn't apply this dry principle and where you should. So scrolling through here, the most important place that I could kind of see that needs to be dried up is this little function, right? There's a formula going on here that is taking the price of the product, which happens to be in cents here, and it's converting it to the actual dollar amount. So if it's 400 cents, that's gonna be $4 in US currency. And then we kind of display it here and that's what's being showed in the uh, UI over here. So if we wanted to dry this up, the best approach would be basically abstract this away um, to a helper function. So I'm gonna make a new file here called git cost, or I would call that like format cost or something. And this is gonna be a file that's gonna contain that formatting logic, okay? Because we don't wanna have that code duplicated all throughout our code base. So I'm gonna say const, so I'm gonna say export const format cost, and I'm gonna take in like a cost and cents. And let's just go ahead and take that formula. And we're gonna copy and paste it verbatim and just kind of put it right here in this function. So let's just go ahead and wrap it in single quotes, or sorry, wrap it in back ticks. 
And let's just do some conversion here. So instead of item.price, we are gonna do Austin since. Cool, so now we actually have a function that we kind of share amongst these two pages and kind of reduce that duplicate logic. So this is a great example of how to keep some code dry. Let's just go ahead and import this and use this real quick. So at the top of this module script, I'm gonna say import uh, format cost. And then from that format cost file here, and then we can simply just call it. So if I scroll down, I can simply just pass with some type of string interpolation. Going to pass in item dot cost. All right, and we're going to do a very similar approach to the products page. So let's just go ahead and say format cost product dot price and hopefully that's good. I just need to import it up here. So I'm say import format format cost equals or sorry from Hopefully my copilot tells me what to type in. All right, so let's go back to the UI and make sure that the cost is being displayed. I think we have a little bug with the something. So I, I named it price, not cost. So let's make sure we do that correctly. So let's see, we have Apple showing up. If we go to the products page, we also have those showing up correctly. So again, this was a really simple example of when you could potentially dry up code. Let's look through this file again and try to find another example of where you could dry stuff up, where you can kind of reduce, reduce that duplicate logic and put it to a centralized place so that you don't have like duplicate things going on. So because we're dealing with a multi-page static website, basically, we have a header component, which is kind of duplicated between these two pages. So if I look at products HTML, you see we have a header up here in a cart HTML. We also have the exact same header. So this again is a great example of identical code that is kind of sprinkled through multiple pages that we should kind of consolidate into a centralized place. This makes it a lot easier if we need to add another link in the future or if we need to change or fix a bug in the header. Now we just need to do it in one place instead of doing it potentially in 10 different pages, right? So let's try to do this as well. This might be a little bit more difficult than the other approach. So I'm gonna make a index file here. I'm gonna call it createheader.js. And that's going to export a function called create header. And what we could basically do is do some type of DOM logic or manip manipulation to basically create a header component. We are going to insert that header, those header links, and then we're going to append it to the, the body, right? So we say const header is equal to document dot create element. Luckily, all this code looks like it's being given to us, but we make the header and then we can say header dot enter HTML is equal to and then remember we copy that code out so I can kind of paste that in and this is gonna have the two links here. And again, all we're trying to do is just kind of take that logic that was duplicated in multiple pages and put it in a single place. But now we need to actually like prepend it to the body. So if I say body or document.body.prepend, I should be able to prepend the header. And now whenever we run this create header function, it's going to basically do this logic and put a header on the page. Let's try this out. Let's go to the products page. Let's delete this header. And down here, I'm going to go ahead and import that file. So con or import create header from dot slash create header dot JS. You know, technically I don't need to put the JS here. So let's just get rid of that stuff. And we are just going to call it. So I'm going to say create header here. That should invoke the function. And I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go over to cart and do the exact same stuff. So there is still a little bit of duplication going on, but this is like a better approach because now that component is basically being initialized and injected from some JavaScript code. So let's look at the products page. Notice that the header's there. Look at the cart and that's there. Now, if we wanted to go through and add another link to the header, it's super easy to do. I could just, you know, add a new YOLO link and you'll see that it pops up on all of my different pages that are using that header shared function. So again, this is another great example of keeping your code dry. So although I've talked about some good examples of when you can use it, I do want to mention some times where you probably want to avoid it because you might just be over engineering or you might be just kind of making your code more complex than what you really need to be. So if we look back at the cart page and also compare it 
to the products page. Hopefully my head's not blocking too much. But if you scroll through it, you'll notice that there are some similarities, right? So there is like a logic to get the element by ID. And in fact, this uses like a products key, this uses an items. And then we have like a hard coded array of items. And then we have like a list that loops through and creates this. If you wanted to, you could potentially try to, you know, figure out a way to abstract this behind a function, right? So let's say I wanted to make a function called like const render products, which takes in a list of things and basically runs, uh, I'll just say some of this code. Let's just say it runs this code, right? Let me go ahead and close that one so we have more real estate. So you could potentially get into this like this thought process of, oh, I'm gonna abstract everything away into little helper functions that are kind of generic and reusable in different files. But honestly, there's a high chance, there's a very, very high chance that the code that you wrote in this little helper function is going to be very different depending on if you're on the cart page or if you're on the products page. So if there's a high chance that the code is gonna be customized and changed, then you don't wanna abstract it. You don't want to dry up the code because really you're just kind of creating a really bad abstraction, which is bad. Um, <laughs> so again, like you might be, you might feel this need to basically, when you start finding these like little customization things, you might be like, well, I'm just gonna add in another argument that's like, should display costs, okay? And then like, you'll start going into your code, your, your dried up, helper function and then you start sprinkling this like you know ternary operators to say like if this then format it a certain way versus formatting it the other way and at this point you're no longer kind of achieving what keep it dry is like you're kind of just over abstracting your code so before i kind of wrap up what i'm talking about i do want to talk about another acronym called wet right so write everything twice this is like a, a counter argument to the dry acronym because people have realized that if you take dry too far, you just kind of make really uh, over-engineered code. So the other acronym of WET, write everything twice, basically allows you as a developer to realize that if I see two duplicate instances, if I write code once and then I find out that I'm writing the exact same code another time or even a third time, then it's probably a good time to think about a way to abstract this identical code. Now, again, I would say if the code is identical, then you can dry it up. If there are some slight deviations to these different, you know, blocks of code, then I don't think you should abstract it away and start doing this really hacky argument, Boolean flag stuff, because now you're just making a function that has super high cyclomatic complexity that's hard to manage, hard to test. I would always argue for having really specific functions that just do one thing and one thing only. But I'm kind of going off topic now. Remember the acronym is dry, keeping your code dry. I showed you some examples of how you can kind of achieve that with web development and JavaScript HTML. And try to always keep that in mind as you're writing code. Is there a better way to maybe centralize this place, centralize this logic, centralize this component, centralize this function so that if anything else in my application might need it, I could basically use it. And also keep in mind that you don't want to overdo it because now you're just creating an over complex engineered mess. But yeah, hopefully that was good. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow. Also, if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be publishing other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you understand how to become a better web developer. And also leave me a comment below. Do you like keeping your code dry? Do you know what this acronym already meant before you watch this video? Also, did you know what the acronym WET means? Um, leave a comment below. I'm interested in hearing what acronyms you like following when you code. Uh, there's a lot of others. And I might try to cover them soon in some future videos, but be sure to stick around and happy coding.